Farts weren't always a laughing matter in antiquity. Egyptians, Romans, and Greeks believed beans were an emblem of death. By extension, that made farts a death knell. Back in the days when people took toots seriously, farting could indeed mean that you were about to breathe your last breath. For something that the human race tries so hard not to laugh at, the gravity associated with flatulence throughout history may surprise you. One time, though, that gravity dragged thousands of people down to the grave during Passover. Admittedly, it's difficult not to crack a fart joke here, but for now, let's just hold it in and get to the bottom of what happened. As recounted in Who Cut the Cheese? A Cultural History of the Fart, the deadly flatulence happened in 44 AD, not long after the death of King Herod. While Jews partook in a Passover feast, a Roman soldier standing guard decided this was the time to make a statement, assumed the tooting position, and, quote, spoke such words as you might expect upon such a posture. <laughs> <laughs> oh, somebody stepping a duck. <laughs> In a modern context, you might expect the soldier's cheeky speech to resemble that lighthearted scene in Ace Ventura when the pet detective pretends to talk through his backside. Excuse me, I'd like to ask you a few questions. But the Romans' act reeked of malice. The gigantic gathering erupted into a riot as the younger people among the crowd began throwing stones at the Romans. Roman reinforcements arrived, prompting the congregation to flee. Amid the bedlam, people trampled and crushed each other. The Jewish historian Josephus wrote that 10,000 people perished in the process. Centuries earlier, a Greek comedian may have helped kill a great philosopher by farting with words. I knew a... In grad school. Oh. oh, well, thank you, but it's actually pronounced. In 419 BC, the comic playwright Aristophanes published The Clouds, which mocked Socrates in flagellant fashion. In the play, the philosopher dishonors Zeus by claiming that it was not the god of thunder who made the sky rumble. Instead, Socrates says swollen clouds are cutting the cheese and compares it to when someone eats too much stew and has to release their gas. The fictional Socrates also claims that gnats buzz through their trumpet like butts. All we are is dust in the wind, dude. The Clouds concludes with the sacrilegious philosopher lighting a torch and appearing to suffocate himself to death, after which he's chided for slighting the gods. One might interpret his demise as a morbid fart joke, but in The Death of Socrates, Emily R. Wilson argues, suffocation seems, within the play, an appropriate death for one who has relied on so many various forms of hot air. Socrates, who spouts windy nonsense, who worships the air and clouds themselves, and who explains thunder as a cosmic fart, finally gets the death he deserves. Per the standard Encyclopedia of Philosophy, in 399 BC, Socrates was convicted and executed for religious irreverence. According to Plato's Apology, the Athenians who called for the philosopher's death grew up believing the cloud's depiction of Socrates. The real-life philosopher allegedly held Aristophanes more responsible for his fate than the actual accusers at his trial, who condemned Socrates to die by drinking poison. In the past, a fart not only had the power to end lives, it could upend them and take down powerful people. It's uncontradicted that the president used taxpayer dollars to ask the Ukrainians to help him cheat an election. For instance, Historic UK recounts how during the reign of England's Elizabeth I, the Earl of Oxford farted while bowing before the queen. He was so utterly ashamed of himself that he left the country for seven years. Sorry, I farted. Upon his return, Elizabeth quipped, My lord, I had forgotten the fart. Not every monarch has responded so kindly to butt burps, though. In fact, an ancient Egyptian king responded to a fart so harshly that it cost him his kingdom. According to Mental Floss in 570 BC, King Apri sent his general Amosis to quell a rebellion. But Amosis found himself siding with the dissidents, who suggested he try to overthrow Apri's. The pharaoh sent a messenger, Patarbamis, to retrieve the general. At this point, all hell and smell broke loose. Rather than obey the Apri's, Amosis, who was mounted on a horse raised his derriere and unleashed a fart for the messenger to take to Apries, along with the warning that Amosis would return to fight. Apries didn't kill the messenger, but he mutilated him. Patarbamis had his nose and ears chopped off. This was a grievous misstep because the public loved Patarbamis. Now they hated Apries, and as a result, Apries was soundly routed, cast down by Amosis, who seized the throne. Smells like... Victory. 
Check out one of our newest videos right here. Plus, even more grunge videos about your favorite bodily functions are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.